People arrested on the street and thrown in jail, all because of unpaid bills. Why is this happening? Thanks for joining us for the Star Tribune Sunday Preview. I'm Glenn Howitt, and this is Chris Sears. Chris, you wrote the story. Tell us why people are, are being arrested and why the rest of us should be concerned. People are being arrested in part because creditors are becoming more aggressive about collecting old debts. What's happening is this. People are falling behind on their bills, and when they ignore a court judgment, then a creditor has the right to actually get a warrant issued for your arrest. Now what this means is that you could be driving to work, you could be at work, or you could be at your house. And then one day, a sheriff's deputy might show up and say he or she has a warrant for your arrest. And that could mean you're brought into jail and it's essentially over an unpaid debt. A lot of people don't realize this can happen, and that's part of the shock of when it does happen, is they have no idea that when they fail to pay a debt, that it could actually lead to jail time. Now, we spoke to a number of people who've had this experience, some of which, some of whom are still quite distraught about the experience. One woman, for instance, was trying to park downtown one afternoon and she was arrested on the street all over a $250 J.C. Penney credit card. Now we caught up with her recently and here's what she had to say. Well, I was pulled up to a meter downtown and I was just opening the door and digging through my purse trying to find quarters and someone said, hey, and I, I turned around and there was a cop pulled up behind me. And he was like, hey, and I was like, hey, how's it going? You know, <laughs> real friendly. And he's like, can you come here for a second? You know, I wanted to show you something. And I was like, sure. So I walked over to his car, and then he opened the back door and sort of, you know, escorted me in the back. And then he turned his computer around, and he's like, this is what I wanted to show you. You have a warrant. So yeah, he took me to jail, and they processed me, and I had to strip and put on the orange jumpsuit and... They don't even let you keep your own underwear. And then you sit in a little box for forever with uh, um, like a door here and a door there and, and a camera. And then they finally move you to the next room and the next room and the next room. And you know, police have way more to do than uh, doing the job of a collector. They, I mean, that should not be part of what they have to do. I mean, with everything else going on and there's so many other things that are more useful. I mean, it seems to me they found a way to manipulate the cops into working for them for free. They're free employees. You know, they can just go say, here, go find this guy and make him give me my money. And that's not the policeman's job. That's not supposed to be their job. I mean, no other companies do that. You know, no one else can get away with that. Why is it that collection agencies can, for some reason, have this? have this loophole. No, that's, that's not the way it's supposed to go at all. Now, you found that the whole collection industry is changing. What kind of impact is that having on, on this, the, these warrants and arrests? Well, the industry has changed quite dramatically. What, what we found in our research is that there has been an ascendancy of uh, the financial firms that are buying debts, and they buy debts, uh, old debts, by the thousands. So your credit card debt, if you fail to pay it, could be bought by some financial company in Virginia or New York, and that firm has no relationship with you. So they are more likely to uh, pursue aggressive legal action than, say, the original creditor that might want to maintain a good relationship with you or might have, say, a reputation to protect. So what we're seeing is, is really a microcosm of the, I guess you could say, the financialization of uh, the, um, uh, the, the debt collection industry. And taxpayers are paying for this? That's correct. Uh, it, we are paying for this in a way. Uh, keep in mind that when someone is arrested, uh, there is a cost associated with picking up that person, bringing them to jail, and if they're kept overnight, there's a cost associated with actually housing that inmate. Uh, the collection firm, the creditor, the debt buyer, they don't pay that. And of course, the person being arrested does not pay that either. So you and I pay for it. Uh, critics would say that this is essentially making the, uh, the courts and the law enforcement officials an arm 
of the debt collection industry. Um, I guess on the other side, the argument could be made that, look, people have been contacted many, many times. In some cases, they're contacted 15, 20 times over an unpaid debt, and it's their obligation to take care of it. And when they get a court order that says you have to appear in court, that's a court order. And if you don't, then you should be arrested. And uh, so there are obviously uh, two sides to this, to this issue. Well, you can learn more about this by reading Chris's story in the Sunday Star Tribune. I'm Glenn Howitt. That's Chris Sears. Thank you for joining us.